Hello everyone, welcome back to another Epic Future Space. My name is Michael Clark and I haven't uploaded a video in a really long time and I'm really sorry about that. In fact, over the past six months, videos have been really sporadic for me. But hopefully I can get back into a good flow of things and uh, talk about some of the awesome stuff that has been happening and hopefully make up for it somehow. So I have been making YouTube videos for a long time now. I've made lots of videos and have been doing this for about two years now. I have learned a lot over the past two years and it has been a lot of fun talking about just all the awesome stuff that has been happening recently in space and just the possibilities of what we could be doing in the future. To me, the area of space that interests me the most is human spaceflight, and I've covered it a lot over the past two years. But specifically, commercial spaceflight has interested me as hopefully being able to get humans out into space and doing cool things faster than NASA has been doing over the past 30 years. Although, don't get me wrong, I love NASA and all the cool stuff that they have done and are doing, but there needs to be more, and it needs to be happening faster! And that's why, over the past two years, commercial companies like SpaceX and Bigelow Aerospace have been highlighted by me so many times. And over the past six months, a lot of really cool and very important things have been happening, and I have been noticeably absent from commenting on it. So I'm not going to bore you with the details of what's been happening over the past six months, because if you're watching this video, chances are you probably already know what's going on anyway. But real quickly, I just want to talk about six main things that have been happening that are mind-blowing. First of all, SpaceX has flown two commercial resupply missions to the International Space Station, both successfully. Although both missions had their bugs and, and tweaks that happened during the missions that hopefully those problems have been resolved. But nonetheless, they still succeeded in their primary mission of delivering their cargo to the International Space Station and returning what they needed to return back to Earth. Also, SpaceX has been having phenomenal success with their Grasshopper test vehicle. The video for their most recent Grasshopper test is so mind-numbingly awesome. I, I don't even have... I'm speechless! So congratulations to everyone over at SpaceX who's been doing such a phenomenal job. Now, Orbital Sciences, a company that I haven't really talked about, and the reason for that is because I wanted to give them a good um, history of where the company came from and kind of show what their whole development has been over ever since they started in the 80s. And I've never really gotten around to that. And honestly, that's just real life getting in the way. The time to, to do the sort of video that I really want to do about them, I just haven't had the time for. And I still want to do that video in the future, and I'm kind of breaking the fourth wall here telling you guys all about this. But anyway, Orbital Sciences, the competitor in the COTS program, program to deliver cargo to the International Space Station has finally launched their Antares rocket. Initially it started out as the Taurus 2 rocket, they changed the name to the Antares rocket after the Taurus 1 rocket had several recent failures, and freaking finally! I know that this was supposed to happen a long time ago, and I know that space-time is different than real time. Everything takes a lot longer in space, especially in the current industry and economical situation that we're in right now, but... It finally happened. They tested out the Antares rocket, they did several hot test fire tests and so much refitting, especially since one of the main engines was having problems and they had to replace it with another one. They finally launched it though, it was a success, everything worked out great. They even delivered a couple of CubeSats that were uh, uh, carried along with their uh, payload simulator for the Cygnus. And that's awesome to be able to accomplish several goals along with not only proving out that their rocket works, but just proving out that all the different functions and capabilities and all the different parts are working together and so that their next flight, which will have a Cygnus capsule on board, and I shouldn't even say capsule, I should say Cygnus freighter, I guess, because, we'll, well, we're not going to get into that right now. In any case, congratulations to everyone over at Orbital Sciences for completing the successful test launch, and good luck for the next launch, and I hope that everything works successfully for that, and that the Cygnus works, just that everything works as planned. In my last video before this one, I was talking about Bigelow Aerospace and their addition to the International Space Station. Once the press release came out, we got a little bit more details about what sort of station module would be attached to the International Space Station. I'm mean, gonna admit, I was a little disappointed. The information I was getting was leading me to believe that it was going to be the Galaxy module refitted to be attached to the space station, but instead, the Beam module seems, to me at least, to be a step down from the Genesis module, except for the fact that it has a docking port and can be berthed to the space station and, I guess, has life support capability. So yeah, that's all steps in the right direction. And don't get me wrong, this definitely is a step in the right direction, and the technology that they're going to prove and the capability that Bigelow Aerospace is going to prove is hopefully going to be able to garner them a lot of trust in the general 
general public's view as well as NASA and the rest of the space industry. So all in all, the beam module is still something to be really excited about. I was just hoping that it was going to be big, bigger and larger, but I guess that's just my imagination getting away with me. In any case though, congratulations to everyone over at Bigelow Aerospace and NASA for coming to this agreement and getting us a step in the right direction. And of course, I can't end this video without talking about the most recently awesome thing that finally freaking happened. Finally! If you don't know what I'm talking about, Virgin Galactic has finally had a powered test flight of their Spaceship 2 passenger carrying suborbital space plane. Finally! That's awesome! It's been a long time coming and a lot of delays have happened and I can't even really complain about it because rocket science is difficult and a lot of the problems they've arisen with have been, you know, big problems and you know, things that they need to deal with. And Sierra Nevada, the company that is building the, the, the hybrid rocket motor, this is the biggest hybrid rocket motor that has ever existed and they're planning on building bigger ones in the future. Everything worked beautifully, even on this short test, it was only a few seconds long. They broke the sound barrier, they went Mach 1 and everything performed very well and it was very quick and very good. And it's very awesome. So congratulations to everyone over at Virgin Galactic, the Spaceship Company, Scaled Composites, and Sierra Nevada for completing this test and getting suborbital tourism one step closer to being a reality. I hope that all the next power test flights are just as successful and continue to reach their milestones that they need to reach until they are able to have passengers on board and actually get into suborbital space. Suborbital tourism could really be our gateway into the solar system. I mean, think about it. Suborbital tourism is already a multi-million dollar industry. And I don't mean that that's how much money has gone into it. Much, much more has gone into it. That's how much profit has been generated. Multi-millions of dollars have been generated from the suborbital tourism industry between Virgin Galactic, x Aerospace, and a few of the other ones that are out there as well. What I mean is that commercial space enterprises, commercial space endeavors could actually succeed and actually be a viable business. And once the profit is generated, once the money is generated, then everything else will fall into place and we can finally go out there and do all the amazing things that we know that we can do, that we need to do, and that we should do. Because it's our future and it's an epic future and we have to make it happen. So real life has gotten in the way of me making these videos and there's lots of things that are happening to me right now that I'm not going to get into but the point is, is regardless of all of that, I'm still going to try my best to make more videos and get back into this and I want to try to make more as many as possible. I want to try to make once a week but I don't want to make any promises because every time I make a promise on the internet I have to break it. Not that I have to, it's just that that's what always happens. Every time I make a promise it always gets broken on the internet. So I'm not making any promises but I will be making more more videos when you're gonna see them and what they're gonna be about so I'm not gonna say anything about because if I do I'll break it so um, there will be more videos though that at least I can promise you and uh, I have another type of video that I'm gonna have other than these sort of uh, space news shows so um, I, I think you guys will enjoy that so you'll just see check your inboxes very soon for that <laughs> until then though uh, keep being excited about space keep getting excited about space and add Astra to the stars Oh, I almost forgot. You should like this video, you should subscribe to my channel, and you should check out some of the other projects that I've been doing lately, such as my Orbital Transit, Orbital Transit, Orbital Transit, which is a cool electronic uh, instrumental beat making type of thing, which is all the background music which I've been making for this show over the past two years, plus a whole bunch of other stuff that you guys haven't heard yet. So definitely go check that out and let me know what you think, and they would really make me happy to get some feedback and uh, know if you guys like it or not. Also, I'm in a new punk rock band called Audio Martyr, which you guys should check out. And uh, they have a huge fan base, so I am very uh, lucky and honored to be a part of this band. And uh, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff from that as well. So I'll share stuff with that, but, I, but this is obviously the Space Channel, so I'm not going to overwhelm you with it. We're going to talk about space here. So I'll see you guys next time, and thanks for watching. At Astra.